what's up guys and uh, well welcome to what only can actually explain be one of the most interesting metas following here in september now the vgc and the dynamax meta has been very very clear cut on which pokemon that are the most viable one and uh, pokemon decided to ban the 10 most popular pokemon from each individual meta what this mean is basically that well, the most efficient mods are gone and the meta will change forever due to this. Only for September, but it does allow people and players to rediscover the meta and uh, redevelop their you know, keen senses and realize what are working without these Pokemon. So the Pokemon gone are Cinderace, Dragapult, Excadrill, Jaros, Hippodon, Incineroar, Indeedee, male and female, Magnezone, Mimikyu, Porygon 2, Rillaboom, Togekiss, Torkoal, Tyranitar, Whimsicott, and Venusaur. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well, first and foremost, really, the best weather setters are absolutely gone. We have no more sand offense whatsoever. We have, by getting Torkoal gone and Venusaur, we have the strongest sun steam combination, absolutely rid of the game. And... Um, <clears throat> Rillaboom, one of the best or the only grassy terrain or setter in combination with um, the grassy slide is gone from the game which is a very very dangerous pokemon and i can just like keep going like indeed being gone is phenomenal and uh, yeah i mean whimsy got a good tailwind setter for dracovich and just overall very very annoying also ugh, i mean it's gone and it's actually incredible dragapult and cinderace are very very speedster pokemon that are phenomenal in their own right and very very hard to deal with if done right and um, I mean Jardos special mention really it is probably the best water Pokemon in the game with the Dynamax in mind uh, without it of course it stumbles and only in the Smogon metas where we may or may not actually know too much about it but in Dynamax meta it is uh, a class Pokemon it is such a hassle to deal with so what does this mean? I mean, we're also Porygon 2 and Mimikyu, the best Trick Room setters in the game, also gone, clearly. Just want to have that mentioned. So what does this mean? Well, first and foremost, like we ha have still Sun Axis, but we have Sun through Nine Tails, but we don't necessarily have the Sun Sweeper. We are looking at Shift Tree maybe, but that's about it. And then we're looking at um, Sandstorm. We actually have something I think is viable there, but on the lower tiers with Gigalith, together with Sandslash and Stathland can actually form a really, really strong offensive kind of synergy. It's not the best and it's clearly not having that many resistances together, but I think they can pressure something and they will be interesting because of that. And uh, Hail is untouched, but at the same time Hail is very, very, very underused. But um, <clears throat> I think actually with the changes made, that Aurora Veil can be all the more effective and you know clearly Lapras is a Pokemon that actually can thrive in this meta. Also I realize that Corviknight is still active and it's a Pokemon that clearly works. Now the Magnuson is gone, Corviknight is back, like there is nothing stopping that Mon either. Uh, another combination that is untouched when it comes to terrain setters is that while Ndidi and Rillaboom is gone we still have Galarian Weezing which might not be the most useful one and then we have Pinchurchin. Pinjurchin together with Howlucha and Golisopod forms a very 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 dangerous core mainly because Pinjurchin do allow the terrain, Golisopod has a free switching with emergency exit and of course Howlucha has electric seed. This is a combination I absolutely see working 9 times out of 10 if done right and um, <clears throat> of course it's gonna work, it's, it's a phenomenal combination. Um, I just like when it comes to individual strong Pokemon, I think we have Heracross, which is gonna be great. Dynamax Heracross with Moxie and Earl Ace, um, not Guts, uh, with Scarf instead, is actually quite annoying and can really steamroll a team very fast if done right. And Scissor <coughs> could actually be extremely dangerous, mainly because of the Soul Stun set together with Bullet Punch and uh, either go for a dual Wing Beat, Technician Boost set with, of course, the. Um, Dynamax aspect could boost his speed quite efficiently, but also U-turn, great piloting, hard hitting, and then with Porygon C, which is, has been mentioned as a kind of a, a lack of better words, 
there is no switching to um, analytic boosted or adaptability boosted hyper beam to any team whatsoever. It's impossible. It kills things. And top of my head, like the Pokemon that are the switching there is Gigalith. So I honestly think that Gigalith is going to be a very key player of keeping some of the like top tier offensive mods out of the way. Uh, I do realize that um, Porygon C to get with Scissor is going to form probably one of the strongest offensive core, like mixed offensive core in the game right now. And um, the way I see it, like Goliath can probably solve some of that, but we need we need <laughs> Gilith to kind of soak Porygon away. And then we're not even talking about the obvious thing, we're kind of, I would say, the elephant in the room, which is Dracovish. Dragovich has now the possibility of becoming one of the strongest Pokemon ever. Like Galarian Darmanitan, yeah, it's dangerous and it's absolutely up there in the tree versus tree meta, but Dragovich, yeah. With now Rain being somewhat unhindered, as Pelipper is one of the mods not bad, we can easily see Kingdra, we can see um, Dreadnought, let's see, <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, and we can see Barraskewda being a phenomenal, even like Mantine is very good in Swiss Swift environment. And that's a Pokemon that clearly keeps on giving with um, with little to no issue. So Rain is probably going to be extremely dangerous if not unchecked. And of course, Gigalith is not a switch into that. That's, uh, let's face it, yeah, resisted with Sandstone, but... Or not resisted, just an heightened special offense, but that's about it. I feel I am all over the place because I do realize there are so many Pokemon that are very, very effective still. But it's very fun to know that there are Pokemon here that represent like the elite speed here. And that speed here kind of got lowered. And with no real trick room or setters in the game, I am really, really scared of a few mods in mind. But off the top of my head, Life Orb, like the and Dynamax setting up its own psychic train could be very, very, very annoying. And I think. Age Slash gonna be absolutely up there as a possible switch into that. There are still very good Pokemons in here. I kind of when I went into this episode, it's, it's clear unscripted. I realized which cores are pretty much good and which cores that don't work anymore. But I also realized there are individual strong Pokemons that on their own rights can do just about anything with everything in the meta, and with probably one of the best switches to them out. I see a few of them very much stepping up their game, and um, for me, Alaga Sam is probably one of the best ones, but I'm really looking forward to Gilith, I look forward to Pelipper. Uh, I think when you're building a team right now, you might not need a terrain setter, because with Weezing and Pinchurchin being the ones, they're not the most important one, unless you have a seed Pokemon, but definitely have a weather setter, no matter what. Um, if you don't need a weather, then fine, but at least disrupt it, like have a have a, a bomb of snow on your team just to set up hail um, that's what I think at least because quite frankly with this meta going the way it does you need to stop like the counter like you don't want to allow weathers to fry or steamroll against you and even I think um, Rillaboom's uh, lesser evolution feeble no? no not feeble Twanky or something like that can also be very viable to violate so that's something to always be kind of scared of but I'm like I said, I see Alakazam, I see Scissor, I see Dragovish, I see Aegis Slash, Galarian Darmanitan, those five absolutely now showcasing their true colors. And quite frankly, like no matter what, I am scared of this meta, but I prepped a team and I'm going to do my very best to reach this master rank. And I really, really, really going to enjoy see what happens to a meta when the best 10 Pokemon are not in the game. What happens to the meta then? We are basically a part of um, a suspect test for the first time in Pokemon's history, and that's actually kind of cool. Even though that uh, it's, a, it's a selling thing, but quite frankly, I know what they're doing, but I couldn't enjoy it more than I really are doing right now. So with that said, as always, guys, make a course watching, and what are your thoughts about this upcoming September Master or Drank? Do you guys see a synergy that's going to be stronger than ever before, or do you have a team that you want to try out, and if so, feel free to actually join or link that team for us others to use because that could be very cool to see how others are dealing with this new current meta. So as always, take care everyone.